the end of this lesson, you'll be able to write in exponent form the repeated factors of a number, use the laws of indices effectively, solve equations involving indices. Now, when we talk about indices, we are talking about a mathematical notation indicating the number of times the quantity is multiplied by itself. So the number of times a quantity is multiplied by itself. So if I have a times a times a, it means that a multiplies itself three times. So you have in this form you have it a to the power three. So if I have nine times nine times nine times nine, nine, multi nine multiplies itself one, two, three, four times. So nine to the power four. So if I had seven times seven times seven times seven times seven seven multiplies itself one two three four five times so seven to the power five now let's move on to let's talk about the laws of indices The very first law we'll talk about you have a to the power n times a to the power n. So we have a, you call a the base, and you call m either the index, the exponent, or the power. It means I have a to the power n. A will be called my base. M will be called either index, exponent, or power. So our first law says that if you have a to the power m times a to the power n. Once the bases are the same, you just repeat one of them and then you add the powers. Repeat one of them and add the powers. That's an example. If I have 6 to the power 3 times 6 to the power 4, you repeat the base, which is 6, and then you add the powers. So this will give us 6 to the power 7. So if I had 10 to the power 5, multiply 10 to the power 3, this should give us 10, 5 plus 3, which will give us 10 to the power 8. Okay. So but note that you can't do same to 5 by 3, 4 by 2. Why? Because the bases are not equal. You can see the bases are not equal. So it doesn't matter how many of them you have. So if I had how many bases you had? If I had 2 to the power 3, 2 to the power 2, 2 to the power 1. 2 to the power 4. The bases are all equal to 2, 2, 2, 2. So I repeat the 2 and then I sum the powers 3 
plus two plus one plus four which should give us two to the power ten and try this seven to the power five multiplying seven to the power three Six to the power four multiplying six to the power three. So we're going to get seven five plus three, it gives you seven to the power eight. Here, once again, you have six four plus three, which will give you six to the power seven. Okay, so let's look at the second law. Second law says that if I have the same base and they are dividing each other, then I repeat the base and I subtract n from m. Remember, this is the same as a m all over a n. This gives us m minus n. So if I have a to the power 12 divided by a to the power 6, this should give me a to the power 12 minus 6, which should give us a to the power 6. Okay, it's just applying the rules which you have. So a second example, 10 to the power 3 divided by 10 to the power 1. It should give us 10 to the power 3 minus 1, giving us 10 to the power 2. Remember that it is going to get to a point where you are going to use all the laws together. It's going to get to a point where the equation demands that, or the expression given demands that you use all these laws together. And so note them. So the second one says a m divided by a n is equal to a m minus n. So let's look at the third law. A m all to the power n is equal to a m very simple. So a m all to the power n is equal to a m n. So for example, if I had five three all to the power two, it's equivalent to five three times two, which will give me five to the power six. So if I had a2 to the power 5 is equivalent to A2 by 5, which will give us A to the power 10. Let's move on to our next law. It says that we have A to the power negative 1, which is equal to 1 over A, or condition that a is not equal to 0. 5 to the power negative 1 is equivalent to 1 over 5. If I have a to the power minus 2, okay, this is equivalent to 1 over a squared. How did we come by this? The expression we're giving didn't have 2 in it, but how did we come by this? Look at it this way. A squared to the power minus 1. Remember the third law. So you have 1 over A squared. So if I have 6 to the power minus 3, it's equivalent to 1 over 6, 3. But remember I said you can look at it as 6 to the power 3 minus 1. Okay, so this gives you 1 over 6 to the power 
Now let's put final one down. Any number to the power zero is equivalent to one. So let's try a few questions. So let's say you have to the power three over four. If you look at this carefully, you could solve it as 2 to the power 4, which will still give you a 16, 3 over 4. Remember, our third law says that 2 to the power 4 times 3 over 4, which will give us 2 to the power 3, which is 8. Somebody will ask that, why didn't we say 4 to the power 2, which is also 16? So I multiply by 3 over 4. So now you say 4 to the power 2. Times 3 over 4. Which will give us 4. 3 over 2. See we have still not simplified it. Between this, the first solution and the second solution. We realize that the first solution works better. Now let me give you another question, 25 all over 64, all to the power 1 over 2. Find the least number that will make it easier to simplify. If I look at the numerator, 25 can be written as 5 squared, 64 can be written as 8 to the power 2, okay, half, so... 5 to the power 2 all to the power half all over 8 to the power 2 all to the power half so 5 2 times half 8 2 times half so you get 5 over 8 this is the simplest form in which you can solve this. So I'll give you some questions. Number two, all to the power. Thank you for joining us for this class. Hope to see you in our next lesson.